Tonight we're going to be looking at a combination drill driver with hammer action. This particular one is a Ryobi. Um, this is uh, available from um, higher standards, as you saw at the, the clip at the start of the video. But we're just going, it doesn't really matter about the make. If you get a good quality uh, drill driver, they're all pretty much the same. This has got a couple of features that we'll explain to you. Uh, the first thing to know about when you buy one of these is always look for one. 18 volt is about the, the, the size, it's a, it's a good size, 14 to 18 volt, lots of strength there. Um, make sure you get a spare battery, most of them come with a spare battery. The battery simply unclips by pushing the things in, the, the clips at the side, and then that would go into the charger, which is kind of an upside down version of the, of the drill. Charges in about four hours, this particular one. Push it in, you can hear it clicks in place, um, and then you can hear it as it goes around. So let's explain, before we get onto the features, let's explain the basics of a drill driver. The first thing, as I said, to look for is two batteries. The second thing is a variable speed trigger. Now you can see, I hope, as I press this very lightly, I've got this going in reverse at the moment, which we'll talk about in a moment, but if I press this very lightly, you can hear or possibly see the chuck going around very really slowly. And as I increase the pressure on the trigger, going faster and faster. That gives you a lot of control over the, uh, especially when you're using a screwdriver, the screwdriver uh, part of this combination. Um, so a variable speed trigger. Um, what you saw me do earlier was press this little orange switch here, which is a reversing switch. So. If I'm screwing into, if I'm drilling, for example, into a piece of timber with an auger bit, for example, quite a large hole in a, in a piece of timber, and the, the drill bit gets stuck, which it quite often does, I can put that into reverse, press the trigger, and simply withdraw the drill bit. Um, that's, a, that's a handy feature. Most of them have got that. Okay? Um, this particular drill, as most of them have, of 14 to 18 and up to 24 volts, has got two speeds, one and two. So if you, you know, if you're requiring, if you're drilling through a piece of sheet steel or whatever, um, you put it on a slow gear, maybe throw some water on it or on, onto the steel as well, just to cool the drill bit down, just to go through nice and gently. Um, for masonry, you'd, you'd stick it on the second speed unless you were you're drilling into something that um, you didn't want to crack. For example, if we were drilling through ceramic tiles with this, I would have it on a slow speed definitely not on hammer action. Um, so you, you, you'll get a, a, a leaflet, it's a good idea to have a look to see what's on the internet even to see what speed your drill should be on for given surfaces but it's, it's largely common sense. Which takes me on to what is called the torque setting on combination drills and, and other drill drivers. Um, and the torque setting is something that's not understood by a great many of our um, website users. And the, the easiest way to explain it, I guess, is that the, the lower the torque, the more gentle the drill action is. So if I squeeze the trigger, and this is set on there now, torque number one. So I can hold this chunk. Let's uh, extend the teeth fully. I can hold the truck chuck and pull the trigger and with very little pressure indeed I can stop the motor engaging with the chuck. So just a little bit of pressure on that and that stops the, the drill or, or whatever I'm using going round. As I turn the torque up that gets harder and harder. Now you might ask yourself why that's, that's necessary but let's say we are going to drill um, into, let's reverse that a moment. Let's say we're going to drill um, a screw into a kitchen worktop. I, I can't imagine when we're, why we're doing that, but let's say into a, an expensive piece of hardwood furniture. And we're going to put a screw into it. If you can bear with me and imagine for a moment that this particular surface here is a piece of hardwood, we don't want to damage it, and we want the screw to sit exactly flush with the surface. So we would set our torque quite low um, and 
using our variable speed trigger, start the screw off. Um, this particular drill has got a level on the top, so that you, by looking down on it, you can ensure that that screw is going to go in 100%. Um, straight or upright. I'm not particularly bothered about that for demonstration purposes, but by looking down I can see that that's pretty much straight. So we're going to screw that in and if the camera can watch that screw being driven into the timber on a low torque. Now you can hear that torque clicking in there just as the screw head is flush with the surface of the timber. So that saves me. I know then that by setting that driver to that torque, I can keep all of those screws absolutely flush with the surface. If I want to drive them in a little bit further, I can turn the torque up, and that will continue to drive, in this case just about a millimeter before it stops again. Turn it up a little bit more, and it will drive it a little bit more. So that's driven it just below the surface. That would allow me to get a bit of filler on top of that screw and sand it down to be flush with the surface. But by using the torque, I can decide how far below the surface of that timber I want that screw head to be. By using the reverse switch, I can simply withdraw the screw, and there we have it. So that's the value of a torque setting. At the very, very end of the torque setting scale, there's the hammer action. So, I'll remove the screwdriver bit and I'll place a masonry piece bit in there. And gripping hard on the keyless chuck, I can tighten the chuck on that, on that uh, masonry drill bit. And you saw what I did then, I just held that. This is called a keyless chuck, obviously, because it hasn't got a key. You do that by hand. And by setting this on, its, um, on number 24, I don't know if the camera can zoom in, just above my hand, you can see there's a little diagram of a hammer. That tells you it's on hammer action. Next to that, it shows a drill. So you would set it on one torque less for using um, a high-speed drill bit to go through um, metal or sometimes timber. Um, but let's put it back on hammer. And you can see that by setting it on, in, in I've got speed number two here. With my variable speed, you'll hear it growing. Very slow. Now you can see by the concrete dust, this is an old piece of paving slab that I've just picked up from outside. That's gone in about 25 millimeters with absolutely no problem at all. So the hammer action has driven that through and that's on the highest torque setting, number 24 on this particular drill. So that's really what your torque setting is for. That's how a combination drill driver works. I said I'd mention a couple of features on this, apart from the spirit level on the end, so that we know that the drill is, uh, is going through vertically. It's also got a horizontal level um, on here. I don't know if the camera can see that. Um, so that allows each screw to go in horizontally. And that makes things, putting shelf brackets up, much easier because if, for example, one of your screw holes goes in at that kind of angle and the other screw hole goes in at that kind of angle, getting those two brackets level becomes a little bit more difficult. And just like everything else in the building industry, it's the attention to detail and the preparation that is the difference between a good job and a bad job. So this level actually slides off. This can be used um, on a surface as well as a spirit level, which is quite a clever feature. So as you're putting your brackets up, you can check that they're level. That clips back into the drill very, very easily. Um, but before I do that, I'll explain that on each side of the level, um, there's a, a little clip for housing a drill bit um, of some kind, uh, a screwdriver bit normally of some kind or another. But uh, because we use these so often and so many of them, we keep that the drill bits and everything in our toolbox as you probably do. So this is one of the most popular tools. Um, available from DIY Doctor and so we thought we'd spend some time telling you about it because it's, it's, sometimes it's quite well misunderstood. Um, if you want to find out more about tools, if you want to find out about more about the services that we offer, please do follow us on our, uh, on our Facebook page and on our Twitter feed and we'll communicate with you and, and hopefully answer any questions that you've got. Um, and if you want any tools that you're not going to hire, if you want to buy them, please 
come to our tool store and get them. So that's a combination uh, drill driver with hammer action from DIY Doctor, courtesy of higher standards in Westbury.